Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn how to create a floating action button and an extended floating action button in Jetpack Compose. It's super duper easy, okay? Also, I'll be creating Jetpack Compose projects in upcoming videos. But before that, I wanted to clear all the basics so that you are confident enough to build a project. Alright, let's start. So first, I'll teach you how to create a simple floating action button in Jetpack Compose and then later we will see how to create an extended floating action button. Okay? Now let me quickly add all the prerequisites like colors and theme. And done. Then clear all the existing code. And done. Now let's create a composable function named learnfab. Don't forget to call it here inside the set content. Then to create a floating action button, first we need to create a box around it that acts as a screen surface. Hence, a box with a modifier parameter as fill max size means the entire screen. Then inside that box, here comes the floating action button with four parameters. If you will click on it, you can see all the parameters. Out of which, we will use padding, alignment, color and on click. Wait, let me create a preview of it so that you can see the changes while writing the code. In new Android Studio, it shows code suggestions, which you can directly add by clicking on tab button. Cool, right? Alright, now the first parameter is padding, means the space around it, which will be 16 dp from all sides. Then alignment means the position of the button. I want fab to be at the bottom on the right hand side, technically called the bottom end. Then I want the fab color to be green so i'll give the container color green simple then comes the on click means what will happen when the fab is clicked you can simply redirect to another screen using the navigation or maybe you can open a dialog box anything will work but for now i'll throw a toast now to throw a toast we require context so let me quickly initialize context And then, then here, toast as fab clicked. Great. Lastly, of course, the icon. So there is no parameter to add an icon. Hence, you have to come inside the brackets and here call the icon with the image vector. I'll choose add icon. And content description as null. And that's it. Our floating action button is ready. Let's run the app and see. It looks perfect and it is clickable. Great. See, I told you it was so easy, but it can be hard for a beginner. So let's keep that in mind. Next, let's move on to the extended floating action button. But what's that? So in the extended floating action button, you will have an icon with a text. The text makes the floating action button an extended floating action button. Got it? Alright, let's create it. So I will create a new composable function named learn extended fab. And inside it, I will copy and paste the above code. Also, make sure to call it here inside the set content and comment all the other existing code. And then, now see, we have a context variable for toast, then a box as a screen surface and inside it an extended floating action button with the same four parameters. 
So padding of all side 16 dp. Then alignment as the bottom end. Then container color as green. And then the on click. Here we need to make a change as extended fab clicked. Lastly, we do have an icon as a menu. And as I previously said, an extended fab means a button with an icon and text. So the icon is present. All we need is text that says menu with 4 dp padding and a font size of 16 sp. And that's it. This is how it looks on the preview. Let me quickly run the app and see. Alright, it looks nice. And if I click on it, it says extended fab is clicked. Perfect. And that is it for the video. So if you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next video.